You're listening to In My Humble Opinion with Maxilia Robinson and Charles Lewis only on 101.3 Jams. In My Humble Opinion 101 Jams, I am H.O. Talk Show. Thanks for staying tuned, ladies and gentlemen, because you could be anywhere in the world, but you're here with us. We appreciate that. And um, 434-422-9101, and hit us up online as well, I am H.O. Talk Show, because the conversation is only going to get better, ladies and gentlemen. You know how we do. Taking Seville to the world, that's what we do. Um, just want to be a voice for the people. And speaking of which, we, as promised, we have my man, 101 Jam's own, one of the original cornerstones. Favorite host. Favorite host. Lazer's favorite host. <laughs> <laughs> Taught him how to use the board. Yes, <laughs> made me a beast. Well, <laughs> we have Mr. Remy St. Clair. How you doing, my brother? Hey, I am good. Thank y'all for having me yes. on. I was just saying it's an honor to be here, yo. Like, this is the longest reigning show on 101 Jam's, if I'm not mistaken. Say it one more time. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. That's an honor, yo. Come on, <laughs> And then how Cheryl said it, oh, Mike T. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. So, um, you know, for those who may be living under a rock and may think Remy's only been on, on Saturday mornings on one-on-one jams that came out of nowhere, man, this brother, um, you know, I met him years ago uh, doing open mics, yeah. verbs and vows, back when my man, uh, you know, DJ Double A1K was in town, yeah. man, and... Yeah. um and like Remy always had that stage presence and whatnot about him, so I knew big things were gonna come. And then him and his comrades, man, went on to uh, do the spinoff of the hip hop version of the open mic, Rugged mm-hmm. Arts, yeah. and uh, then the Nine Pillars Hip Hop Festival. And, and y'all going into year three, right? Yeah, we're going into year three, man. Right. This is gonna be a big year for us. Yeah, man. It's and gonna be a big year for the city. That's what's up, bro. So we're gonna let you dig into that. But lastly, but not least, um, also you in many ways have been a you know the African American spokesperson. Person, so to speak, um, for you know, um, you know, the rights of the uh, LBGQT community here mm-hmm. in Charlottesville, and so I um, just definitely wanted you to talk about you know the what's going on with Pride and and any message you have for uh, you know for the Black community here in Charlottesville who um, may be a part of that. Yeah. Or may feel otherwise about it. Just why I want to give you stage for that, man. But brother, just you know, like that's sort of my introduction of uh-huh, you, man. Uh-huh. But like, where do you want to start, bro? I mean, like you know, stranger, you know how to handle a mic. Hey, yeah. man, it, it, it's, <laughs> I'm, I'm knocking the cobwebs off. It's been it's been a couple of months, but you know, like Dorothy said, ain't no place like home, right? <laughs> there you go. You there know you what I'm saying? Um, yeah. Well, first off, I want to thank uh, the city for all the support oh, that I was it has about been given. Everybody starts a speech with that. Now yeah. you know. Now you know. That's <laughs> That's without saying. You got to take the big one up top. But um, I want to thank the city for showing a lot of love and a lot of support um, to the local artists here. The local music scene is absolutely amazing. Let me change that. The independent music scene here in this city there you go. is absolutely amazing, man. And Sir Charles, you've been there. Like, you've helped us out with the rugged arts. You even spent for us. You ain't let them know that you should spend for us hey, the rugged hey, arts. Hey, you know. See? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you should get the chip chip chip. You know what I'm saying? But uh, the city has been really supportive and acceptive of what we've been trying to do. And hip hop has this stigma around it. And it had this stigma mm-hmm. around it everywhere. And we've had a few incidents here where you know unfortunately uh, individuals have lost their lives Mm. um, and that could put a damper on the situation but you don't want to hold everybody down for one person's mistake you know what I'm saying Mm -hmm. Um, right now the city is starting to wake up the artists are coming out guns blazing all these different styles and you know all these different platforms coming out it's a beautiful thing to watch how the music is progressing in the city yeah man so and and coming up as an artist so you know with rugged arts and nine pillar pieces that's something to where you felt like that we needed our own stage our our own voice like to shine our our hip hop within a different light was that, was that the main thought behind that or oh, something yeah. else? Okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Sally's kids need their own space. Mm. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? Like, for so long, we've had to, you know, be these second-class citizens and be handed the leftovers, and now mm-hmm. we're tired of eating the leftovers. You yeah. know, we want to get on the stove top with everybody else. I feel that. I feel you, bro. Yeah. yeah, man. Um, and so, and just recently, you know, just last month, uh, we had um, another Seville Pride Festival. Yeah. Um, you, you know how many years that's, that's been in the running? Uh, this was Bro. year s- seven. Okay. Oh, yeah. long time. Yeah. Yeah, and um, this is my third year hosting it. 
Got you. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And so, you know, and of course, that's a surprise to some, man. But give us your perspective. Well, you know, first tell the people how you are involved in that, and um, and then also your perspective of our place in that, meaning the you know the African American diaspora of the community. Well, um. I got hooked up with uh, Seville Pride uh, via performance. They wanted me to perform one year, and I just saw an opportunity for, uh, you know, better hosting. And it's, and I'm not being disrespectful to anybody that hosted before, mm-hmm. but, you know, I'm old school with my hosting tactics. I love a lot of audience interaction. And before me, I want to make sure that the people are good, you know, because if you make sure the people are good, the people are going to give the artist energy, then the artist is going to give that back to the people, you know, it's a circle, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So I understand that, so I knew that was something that I could add to that, you know, that melting pot that they had. Mm-hmm. And also, I am the music director, so a lot of the entertainment that you see on that stage, you know what I'm saying, uh, myself and the team, mm-hmm. we put them there, you know, and, and we love giving people fresh platforms to showcase their talents and, you know what I'm saying, just yeah. stomp them mud hole and you know what I'm saying and yeah. the scene just a little bit more just to put our footprints in it. Yeah man I definitely got to give you props on that because the one thing I can really appreciate about it is that you recognize the spectrum of hip hop in, in Seville you know like it wasn't heavily so you know with open mics and things a lot of times those are more of your freestyle type artists yeah. and what have you yeah. but but one good thing you know like that you and fellow man and everybody does is, is for, whether it's recognizing you know the OG Klee mm-hmm. you know what's an award yes you the know, legend right right yeah. you know or, or whether it's recognizing, you know, like the current music scene. But then you also had the boom bap artists on there, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like the ones that take you back to the old school, man. So right. I, I definitely thoroughly enjoy myself there. So how yeah. have you watched hip hop um, evolve uh, within the independent scene with the, in the years that you've been involved in it? Well, I'll say this. You know, there's uh, within our community, there's a stigma over the LGBTQ, um, LGBTQ community. You know, mm-hmm. it's, it's, it's classified as not a part of our people, so to speak. You know what I'm saying? One thing I have seen in this city is artists that are willing to look past that and work with openly gay artists like Terrell and mm-hmm. Nate Michelle and myself, you know what I'm saying? And mm-hmm. they not look at us like, oh, well, you know, they looking at me some kind of way or I feel some kind of way. It's about the music. It's about the connection that we have with the music. And the artists in this city have that understanding with each other. And I am so blessed and I'm so happy to be a part of that and um, to be a part of a city that accepts me because I haven't you know received a lot of the ridicule that a lot of other openly gay artists might have received because you know i give that respect to that i want to receive as well so you know because your work doesn't have to be commercialized yeah, i find exactly. that there's often mm. um a higher message in what you're talking about versus right. you know right right and over to the front touch toes yeah 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 because yeah, it's, it's a lot more to life than that you know what i'm saying it's a lot it, now it is it, it, a time and okay, place for everything yeah, you know what i'm saying <laughs> there's a time and a place for everything she's been right, hanging out know. with razor too much yeah <laughs> <laughs> You immediately went to twerking. Like, oh my god! You know what I'm saying? I love that. I love that. <laughs> Aaron, you had something to say? Hey man, uh, the great, great outlook, man. I had a question for you because in the music industry now, it seems that independent artists, or just artists in general, mm-hmm. you have such a bigger platform to put your music out for consumption. I think. And you correct me if I'm wrong. I think that's a pro and a con mm-hmm. because now you just have so much more music there. Yeah. What do independent artists have to do to kind of individualize themselves to to kind of put to, to get themselves actually seen when you can literally like I go on title sometimes. It's like a 150 albums that come out in a week. Yeah. I don't even know what to listen to. Yeah. You know, that's funny because we had someone on. Um, Last week, uh, Nathaniel Starr was on last week, who said he didn't want to be signed. Mm -hmm. Hey, and I'm in the same boat. Keep your money. (laughs) I'm in the same boat. And the reason why I'm in the same boat is because I'm a person that's really focused on home. I'm a homebody. If home isn't good, nothing is going to be good. You know what I mean? So I want to make sure the city that helped bring me up and the people within the city that brought me up have the opportunities to go above and beyond. And, you know, even... Uh, like what we do with Nine Pillars as far as working with the high school students. We have a, a an event called the Freshman Class where we um, give high school students and middle school students a chance to compete for a prize um, and showcase their talents as far as hip-hop goes. And to me, you know, you giving that seed and you giving that future, that five minutes, and though it's only five minutes, like it's like a lifetime for them and they really appreciate it and you're blossoming you're blossoming these students and these kids to come up with this fearless mindset and this respectful mindset and um a new a new old 
uh, perspective of the hip hop game because that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to reinstall what hip hop mm-hmm. once was rather than what it's quote unquote, you know, mainstream right now. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for that, man. Yeah. And, and Remy, I'm, I'm about to hand it over to, to Razor. He has a couple questions. Uh-oh. Uh oh. Hey, get ready. Right. Yeah. Buckle up. Buckle up. <laughs> but, but, uh, but, 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 today. Uh-huh. <laughs> but the segue, though, there's a contrast, though, Remy, and, and I want your opinion on this, and then mm-hmm. I hand it over of that music. Right, so you, let's think about hip hop, and let's think about you know pride, right? Uh-huh. Pride festivals. Right. Um, basically, I want your opinion on on like what you think when you hear people make homophobic slurs, like the old heads sometimes make homophobic slurs to the new uh, regime of hip hoppers mm-hmm. because they have dyed hair, because they wear tight clothes, things like that. Um, a lot of people say that like hip hop ain't hard no more, you know, or whatever the case is. Like, so how do you, um, how do you interpret it? Because you come from that, you come from, from you know, from the old, the golden era. Oh yeah. Like, like, so how do you interpret the, the transition? So here's my thing. Me being openly gay and me being black, you know what I'm saying? It's like. I feel like I have double influence over the game. Mm-hmm. You see those guys walking around with pink hair. You see those guys walking around with fitted jeans. That's not a style that was started within that culture in particular. That was started over on my side of the fence. Mm-hmm. I recognize that. And I don't really have a problem with it. I do clown some of them because some of them look foolish. I'm mm-hmm. not going to front. And some of them know? just whack, right? right? Now, Remy, before you finish <laughs> that point, I want people to go back in the day and look at Melly Mel and some of them. Very true. I'm just saying. Very true. I'm just saying. But see, And, and that just goes to show. <laughs> Show you that you know the influence was there back then as well. Absolutely, you know what you I'm know, saying. Dudes so, wasn't always walking around looking like the four tops. Yeah, you yeah, know very saying? true, <laughs> very true. That Friday, Daddy laid to the side. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> hey, what's up, man? <laughs> what's going on, Doc? Hey, like first of all, I always want to pay homage to you and give you all the respect because you got me to the point that I am on this station right now. Oh, come on, now. That, nah, that comes from you. Now, I ha- my at this point, I always try to help people. Right. How for a black man? Because it's tough being a black man, much less a black man who's in the LGBTQ community. Mm-hmm. Let's talk. We're not talking about music right now. Mm-hmm. How would you suggest that young man that's feeling, uh, who's unsure which way he wants to go? How does he approach his black father? Because I know where I'm from, one of the first things that they always wanted to make sure was that your son liked girls. Yeah. So once now that we're more apt to tell people how we feel and don't have to move away to like express ourselves because I believe that's why Atlanta grew so much yeah you know a lot of people ran down to Atlanta but mm-hmm. for the people that don't want to run down to Atlanta how do you suggest that a person get comfortable in himself to approach his family because you need your family to or love herself yeah or her well I'm just Very saying true. men yeah. because saying. you know two men talking so uh <laughs> he a trip yeah he a red for today <laughs> 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 but um real talk it's, it's all about being fit It's all about being confident and doing some self-reflecting and finding out who you truly are. You can't accomplish anything unless you know who you are. You know what I'm saying? You can't be in a relationship and help boost somebody up if you can't boost yourself up originally. So one thing you have to do is when you look your father in the face and you want to be honest with your father, you just got to be prepared for what will come after. Regardless, you got to live your life regardless of the outcome. You know what I'm saying? Be strong. And if you're having any problems, holler at Uncle Remy. I got you. There you go. That's what's up. My man. Remy, man, thank you, man. It, but, but before we let you go, definitely uh-huh. got to make sure um, that you plug whatever it is you have coming up <laughs> on, on the agenda, whether it's for our good arts, whether, you know, maybe give us a little tease for what Nine Pillows got going. Yeah, right. So I, I could do a little shouting, shouting. First <laughs> off, I want to give a shout out to DJW and also yeah. to Fellow Man, you know what I'm saying? Those dudes work just as hard as I do. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, I'm the type of person to always give respect where it's due. So I want to give a shout out to my brothers for everything that they are mm-hmm. doing because without them I wouldn't have a rock to stand on mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying and W's one of the new mix squad DJs yeah, yeah. Yep. and he will be on the throne room as well yep. in November so you know we do it a bit you know but um I, I just I believe in growth you know what I'm saying and um I just want everybody to not run from themselves you know accept who you are be fearless like I said um Pursue your dreams or pursue your goals because life is short. You know, we don't have, we don't have, uh, uh what, what was it, a movie with, uh, with, um, 
uh, the dude from NSYNC, uh, Justin Timberlake, when they had the, 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 the counters on their wrist to yeah. know how much time they had left. Yeah, we, don't, yeah. we don't have access to that, so we don't necessarily know how much time we I have left. I was going to say Jumanji. Jumanji. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> the one. I thought you were talking about Jumanji. <laughs> that's it. Uh, <laughs> but, um, yeah, you just got to be fearless, and we're we providing those opportunities, and we also want to open up opportunities for others to um, gain platforms and give platforms to people. So Nine Pillars uh, will be going down in April again this year. Um, we have a lot planned. You know, we added the fashion show last year. Um, and each year we're going to add a different element that we missed the year before. So we're going to get around to the full nine eventually. But y'all just enjoy the ride because we rocking heavy this year. Is it normally at the pavilion? Um, no, we usually have it all over. We uh, we do it at UVA. Mm-hmm. We also do it at the X building. The okay. bridge has been a big supporter of ours and also T Bazaar. And shout outs to those venues because those venues have been rocking with hip hop constantly since I was in hip hop. Yeah, since I was in the high school, excuse me. Mm-hmm. And I'm going on 34 next month. You know what I'm saying? Nice. So that's just telling y'all how long I've been out of school. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice. Yeah. And we also have uh, Rugged Arts going down okay. The last Rugged Arts for this year On October 26th Three days after my birthday So everybody come on out <laughs> You know We're going to celebrate the right way And um, you know And I'm sure I think of something else to do In my, my board moments To give people an opportunity And a shot to showcase You know what I'm saying That's what's up bro yeah. Thank you, man. And so, throne room Saturday mornings. What time? Yeah, no. See, we switching times, man. Oh, yeah. So we gonna be That's on right. from three to seven, and uh, look for us uh, the weekend after Thanksgiving. Let's say November twenty fourth. All right, okay. yeah. revamp throne room. Oh yeah, most definitely, baby. Gotta have that. Yeah, yeah. Instagram, <laughs> Facebook, Twitter. Yeah, be Saint like on Instagram, all lowercase because caps are overrated. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <All right>. <laughs> um, <laughs> and also, you can find me on uh, Facebook, Remy Saint Lacroix. Uh, and also my fan page Remy St. Clair yeah, be in contact with me I love conversating with everybody I love meeting new people and socializing alright thank you so much for your time and thank you You've all been for inviting me I appreciate you to 101 Jam's very own Remy St. Clair uh, we appreciate you brother stop back by and talk to us about what's going on now y'all be careful extending that invitation to me <laughs> <laughs> hey we, we found that's right